Question number two, Craig Foss. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Finance and reads, what steps has the government taken to ensure the stability of the financial system? The Honourable Bill English. Mr Speaker, uh, in October last year, the New Zealand government guaranteed retail deposits of New Zealand financial institutions. Over 80 institutions accepted that offer. In total, over $120 billion of deposits from around 3.5 million depositors are covered by the guarantee. The guarantees are due to terminate on the 12th of October 2010. Today, the government has announced that it will be offering a revised retail guarantee scheme, which will extend to the 31st of December 2011. Supplementary. Craig Foss. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Supplementary to the minister. In what ways will the revised guarantee scheme differ from the scheme currently in place? The Honourable Bill English. Mr Speaker, uh, financial conditions have stabilised since last October and ex accordingly the need for support is now less extensive. The significant changes from the existing guarantee will include that fees paid by institutions will be graduated to reflect their risk and will apply to all funds guaranteed. The limit on eligible funds guaranteed will reduce to 500,000 per depositor for banks and 250,000 for all other institutions. Deposit-taking institutions will require a minimum credit rating of double B or higher to participate, and collective investment schemes will not be eligible to participate. All depositors currently benefiting from a Crown guarantee will continue to have their deposits covered until 12 October 2010. Whether or not they are covered beyond that date will depend on whether their institution joins the revised scheme. The Honourable Jim Anderton. Mr Speaker, is the Minister satisfied that every company receiving a Crown guarantee meets the published policy guideline requirement that the individuals controlling it have the relevant business experience and the track record of meeting payments as they fall due and of maintaining solvency. The Honourable Bill English. Uh, Mr Speaker, the Crown has the power under the existing guarantee to appoint inspectors where uh, the Crown believes that uh, institutions aren't meeting all the requirements of the guarantee. I'd point out that any institution current the non-bank institutions covered by the current guarantee will in the next nine months or so, next six months or so, have to meet the requirements of the non-bank regime uh, put in place by the previous government. And that will require all those institutions to uh, acquire a credit rating and meet capital requirements, uh, and uh, they need to get on and organise their affairs appropriately. Craig? Supplementary? Sorry? Supplementary? Craig Foss. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Supplementary to the Minister of Finance. Why has the government announced the changes at this time? The Honourable Bill English. Mr Speaker, the government wants to strike a balance between ensuring financial stability, reducing the distortions to market conditions and reducing the risks to the taxpayers who have so far paid out around $68 million under the guarantee. Today's announcement provides certainty and means that depositors and institutions can make an orderly transition over the next two and a half years from the guarantee back to normal market conditions. Uh, the scheme will be legislated to cease at the 31st of December 2011. The Honourable Jim Anderton. Mr Speaker, can the Minister tell the House what is it about FAA, FAI Finance, wholly owned by the Hanover Group, that gives him confidence that the entity controlling that company has maintained solvency and displayed financial acumen, or is a five-year billion-dollar so-called debt restructuring plan in order to avoid bankruptcy a good example of financial acumen? I, in inviting the minister to answer it, I'm just not 100 per cent sure about the minister's responsibility for the particular financial institution, but insofar as it relates to the guarantee, I'm sure the minister can answer. Well, Mr Speaker, I uh, won't be commenting on individual institutions simply because of uh, the task of supervising the institutions uh, is delegated to the New Zealand Treasury. Uh, the, but any institutions who are covered by the guarantee need to focus on getting their affairs sorted out first to meet the requirements of the non-bank regime, which will be introduced over the next six months, 
uh, and secondly to prepare for a transition to the extended guarantee uh, and then to prepare for a time past 2011 when there will be no guarantee. Some of those institutions may find that a challenge, but the intention of the guarantee is to protect the depositors on the way through. The Hon. David Cunliffe. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Minister, does he expect the major banks to participate in the extended retail scheme? And if not, given the ongoing benefits to the banks flowing from the wholesale scheme, has he indicated his wish to see OCR cuts fully passed through into short-term interest rates? The Hon. Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, we haven't uh, drawn any uh, particular connection between the OCR and whether the banks uh, take up, because both of those decisions are made by other people, the OCR by the Reserve Bank, and the banks themselves will make their own decision as to whether to take up this guarantee. My understanding on the wholesale guarantee is that there are indications that in the financial markets they would be willing to lend uh, non to non-guaranteed uh, issues by, uh, by the banks, and that is a sign of progress towards stability. The Hon. David Cunliffe. To the Minister, why has the Government failed to take any steps to help reduce interest rates, which was identified as a key concern for small business in a business confidence survey from Research New Zealand, the same survey which said that 99 per cent of small businesses thought the job summit was a waste of time? The Hon. Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, in this context, their overriding uh, consideration has been to ensure that credit markets don't freeze up. And I believe the action taken by the previous government in uh, issuing these guarantees uh, was an important part of that. Uh, the measures the government has taken to help reduce interest rates have been primarily around restraining its own spending uh, and its own debt requirements, and the rationale for that was all laid out in the budget. Question.